Hi there and welcome to this IBM Cloud Foundation Skills Series video and uh, this video is about load balancers. So first of all let's think about what a load balancer actually is. So in a nutshell I've written a definition here that a, a load balancer is a service or appliance which takes connection and forwards, it, forwards the request to a resource instance based on a set of rules. So what does that actually mean? So let's think about um, the IBM.com website so um, IBM is obviously a, a large organization and lots of people are on the IBM.com website at any given time. So if you were to put that website on one server, then it may become quickly overloaded. And similarly, if it was only on one web server, then if that one web server went down, then the IBM.com website would go with it and all of a sudden IBM would drop off the internet, which is obviously something that IBM don't really want to happen. So what happens is, um, there are actually multiple web servers underneath um, the IBM.com website. So that when a user requests IBM.com slash index.html, what's actually happening is um, it's being served from one of any number of websites. So the next problem is that if, if that's the case, then you actually need to know the address of the individual web server. So how do you do that? Well, at the end of the day, the user doesn't know that. All they know is IBM.com. So what happens is IBM.com is actually associated with the IP address of the load balancer. And it's the load balancer that then, then actually looks at the web servers that serve IBM.com. And based on some rules, it may well be a round robin or it may be a least loaded rule. Um, it will then actually connect that user to one of the particular server instances. So let's using this diagram, let's say that the user goes for www.ibm.com, it goes through the internet, it hits the load balancer, the load balancer sees that instance four is the least loaded, so it then actually makes the connection to, um, to uh, instance number four. The next user comes along, and again, if it's a least loaded model, it may be pushed towards instance two. But if it's a round robin, then what will happen is the, the next instant, the next user will go to instance one, the next to you, instance two, the next to instance three, the next to instance four, the next to instance five, let's say, and then back round to instance one, instance two, and so on. So that's a round robin rule. So basically a load balancer is there to um, spread load amongst a number of um, web servers that are hosting one particular page. So why do we use them? Well, it, as I said, it's so you can have a single address for high availability, inst high availability instances. So if, if, if you imagine that you have a choice of five different web servers, then obviously each of those different web servers have different addresses. So, um, so, so using a load balancer means you just have one address and the load balancer then passes on um, the connection to the next server. Load balancers also distribute load amongst two or more server instances. So you don't then get into the situation where you've just got one web server and it's overloaded because everybody is connecting to it. If you have two or more server instances, then you can spread the load using your load balancer to each of those instances. So load balancers also have health checking software in them. So what they basically do is they look at the web servers that they're serving content for and uh, they check to see that they're still alive and they're actually able to service user co uh, connections. So um, what the load balancer will do is if you notice that a server fails a health check, then it will stop actually directing traffic to the failed server. So that kind of means that you know users don't then see um, that you've got a, a failed web server. They just carry on seamlessly as though nothing's happened. So they don't ever see that your web site is down, unless of course all your instances have failed. Also, there's no need to expose your web server instances directly to the internet. So what happens is the load balancer actually connects to each of the instances that it's load balancing for via the private IP. So you don't actually need to expose or even actually have public IP addresses for your web servers. So obviously that's great for security. So IBM Cloud has three load balancer offerings. So there's the IBM Cloud load balancer, um, which we're going to explore in much more detail. There's the local load balancer, and you can have that either as a shared or dedicated instance. So with a shared instance, you're sharing the underlying hardware. With a dedicated instance, then you have hardware of your own. And then you can have a Citrix Netscaler VPX or NPX, and that comes in a standard or platinum plan. So this table gives you a little bit more information about the different features available in each of the load balancer offerings. 
So you can see the load balancer types across the top of the table, and then obviously the different features down the left-hand side. So they all do things like public and private address routing. Um, they, both, they all do layer 4 and layer 7 routing too, as well as health checks. Um, you can see that uh, the IBM Cloud load balancer does horizontal scaling, whereas the others don't. Um, they all do um, SSL offloading. Um, management typically is via the IBM portal for the IBM Cloud load balancer and uh, the local load balancer. Uh, but with the Citrix net scalers, um, it's actually all self-managed uh, via the vendor GUI. So you actually get an appliance there. You log into the appliance and uh, do the management from there. High availability is actually built into the um, IBM Cloud local load balancer as well as the IBM Cloud load balancer. And again, you have options to uh, put in high availability for the other options there. And uh, I guess the, uh, the one of the most interesting things as well is around global load balancing. So when we talk about global load balancing, it's whether or not you can actually load balance across regions. So you'll notice the only one that can actually do um, global load balancing is the um, Citrix Netscaler um, Platinum version. Pricing um, for all options apart from IBM Cloud Load Balancer is, is monthly and it's a monthly flat fee. However, with the IBM Cloud Load Balancer, um, pricing is actually usage-based. So it's uh, how many hits that the load balancer gets and will we'll, um, make up your pricing for the month. So that's about it. Uh, so in the next lab, what I'm going to do is actually simulate a website that has three different instances to it. So three different servers which serve the website. And I'm going to create an IBM Cloud Load Balancer. I'm going to show you how uh, the connections are being distributed and then demonstrate an instance actually going offline as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, uh, feel free to leave a comment. If not, we'll see you in the lab next time.